right, y'all. You know what time it is. You know I couldn't let you have a drama-free weekend. It's your favorite private investigator, Ashley Wardlow. And I'm coming to you, bringing you all the facts. Hey, YouTube family. I'm here today with another very important video for those who are victims of immigration fraud. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe and like this video because I'm going to keep coming to you guys with facts, with real evidence, and anything that I can do to help you with your case. Okay, guys. So before I start the video, I just really quickly wanted to touch on something that recently happened. I posted a video. It was a trailer for an interview that I had done with one of the victims of immigration fraud. And the video had nothing to do with my ex. It had everything to do with the topic, which is the whole point of my channel, which is immigration fraud. And I am working on a docu-series and I'm going to continue to work on that. But anyway, I received a text from Ken Troy Richards, also known as Jordan, and he pretty much tried to intimidate me or make me stop making my videos. And I will not stop making my videos. I will keep pushing this issue. I will keep spreading awareness. I will keep exposing these con artists. Um, there's nothing that he can say to me or try to do to me that's going to scare me into some type of hole where I feel like I cannot keep doing what I'm doing. I have received great feedback. I've gotten a following and I just hope to continue to get more followers and more people to stand behind me and other victims of immigration fraud. So today I thought it was important to share how I won my case, which was my annulment against a con artist. So uh, I get a lot of questions from people and they're like, you know, this is what I'm going through. You know, how did you do it? What evidence did you use? Um, of course, every case is different. So you can't expect for what happened for me to happen for you. And of course, our evidence is going to be different. So what I would definitely recommend is for you to gather all of your evidence. And one service that I do offer is to look over that evidence and provide my consultation regarding what you have. And if I think you may have a good case, of course, there are other people who I actually use to help me with my case. For example, I did have an attorney and I think it was important to have an attorney because you can go on Google and you can, you know, go online and get all of this information as far as what you need to file. But at the end of the day, I think attorneys, they just know better <laughs> than we do. So I put, I put my trust in some attorneys. I'll put their information down below in case anybody needs them. Um, and I did go and hire a consultant. His name was John Sampson and he actually worked for immigration as well. So I'll put his information down below in case anybody may want to use his services as well. Um, my services with me having a forensic background and being able to extract data and do a number of different things when it comes to digital evidence um, and just thinking outside the box, that's where I come in and, and tell you how you may recover something that you might think is already gone. You don't have it anymore, whatever the case may be. Um, and I was the one who pushed for my attorneys to subpoena these text records that I knew existed. So at one point, these this company said, you know, we don't have this person's text records. And I said, no, yes, you do. I've already verified it. Here are the screenshots of their profile. Here's the number that he was using. And then they were like, oh, yeah, wait, Ken Troy Richards. And this is his email. And yes, we do have records. So um, a person like me, I'm going to know what to look for. And of course, if you guys are interested, please go to my website, wardlowconsulting.com. Um, I'm on Instagram, Wardlow Consulting. Um, I'm on TikTok. <laughs> uh, I'm on I'm on pretty much every platform. So if you guys are interested in my services, go ahead, follow that link below. And you guys, uh, I'll, I'll be happy to offer my consultation services. So what factors helped me win my annulment against a con artist. His name is Kentray Richards. He also goes by Jordan. Um, I have some notes here that I'm going to go through with you guys. 
But there is a very important document that I put together that I think I should share with you guys. And it's going to hit the points like straight on. Like here it is. There's no questions about it. He is a con artist. He committed fraud, etc. So um, again, I did have lawyers. So they sent out a petition and in Illinois, we call it invalidity of marriage. So a lot of other states still call it annulment. Illinois says invalidity of marriage. OK, the marriage was invalid. So we filed our petition for invalidity of marriage. And when he did have attorneys before they dropped him because they found out he was a liar. OK, um, when they did respond, I went and, and responded to their response, so to speak. So I gave this information to my attorneys and I felt that it would be very helpful because I knew what I was talking about. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys. OK, so I think it will be good, actually. Let me go to the original. Let me show you guys a picture of the original. That way you can know that your girl here is only coming to you with the facts. OK, I said that in the beginning. I'm not making this up. I'm coming with the facts. So um, here is our petition for invalidity of marriage. OK, as you can see, I am the petitioner and he is the respondent. You'll see the day that we stayed together until October 13th. 2021 it's right there um just 32 days after we got married okay um basic other basic things which were important for this case which was the fact that we didn't have any children born during the marriage okay we have a daughter but she was born prior to us getting married in 2020 okay we got married in 2021 and he had a child in 2021 with another woman. So this is just stating that we did not have any children together because I have heard that it's it, first off, it's very difficult to get an annulment. So when you get one, you have to come with the business like you got to come. <laughs> you have to come ready. OK, and, and you really have to have the facts ready for this judge to say if this marriage is deemed invalid. We Wanted to show that we did not have any children that were born during the marriage. And I think that's a very important aspect when you're trying to get an annulment. It doesn't mean that, you know, if you do, then you won't be granted your annulment because I'm not a judge, but I can speak on what happened for me. Um, so go down some, a little bit more. You'll see we met in Jamaica and at relevant times, I did believe that I was in a le legitimate relationship. So uh, prior to October 13th, 2021, I did believe that I was in a legitimate relationship. Um, we were working through issues here and there, and it was like marital issues before I knew about all the prostitutes and stuff. It was issues like, you know, he's not helping me take care of the baby. Uh, he'd come home from work and stay downstairs in the basement all day. Um, now I know he was in the basement holding conversations with other women, you know, sending pictures of his penis to other women, um, doing a bunch of creepy stuff in the basement. So, um, oh, and, and of course I'm coming to him, you know, like, Hey, come upstairs, you know, hang out with the family. And when we would have like barbecues and stuff like that, he would come out then because that means he gets to eat and it's free alcohol. Is that barbecue? No. Looks like barbecue. Is that free barbecue? Other than that, he wanted to stay in the basement. So uh, moving on, number seven, it just states that he came over to the United States on a K-1 visa on June 19th, 2021. Okay. Um, number eight, it, it states that this is this is something personal that I didn't want to talk about a bunch of times with people, but I'm going to just go ahead and, and, and be open and, and honest. Like, otherwise it defeats the purpose of me being me, which is the person that brings all the facts. So number eight states that on July 17th, 2021, he raped me. And I know people are like, well, how could you get raped? That's your, your boyfriend. Or how could you get raped? It can happen. And I've seen it happen to friends. And I really only felt comfortable talking about that to those friends because I just, you know, felt disgusted. But he did 
raped me that night. And it was it was one of the most horrible feelings because this is somebody you trust and you don't expect them to try and take advantage of you when you're uh, not able to give consent. But he did that. And I'm sure I'm not the only person that he's done it to. Um, unfortunately, nowadays, people make it OK to get people drunk or get people um, maybe high on pills or whatever. Whatever they're giving out nowadays, they make it OK. Like it's part of the party. And once you pass out, it's like it's time for them to to jump on to you. And um, it's very sad because I see it being like promoted almost. But it's not OK. And if anyone ever found themselves in that type of predicament, I would hope that you would seek help and seek justice because it's not OK for anybody to be taken advantage of. OK, um, I'll go ahead and move on to number nine. OK, this is talking about the knife that he had ordered. And I'll show you guys a copy of, of, of what I'm speaking about. OK, he went on Amazon and purchased the knife and he would often you know, threaten to to stab people and stab them up and oh, me stab your blood clot. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm gonna stick your ass and I'm gonna stick him and I'll definitely stick this little janky ass bad luck motherfucker standing here. He would always threaten to do that, but you know, we were always just like, okay, I knew that that was what he was capable of doing because in Jamaica they walked around with knives a lot and it was kind of like normal for somebody to get stabbed up. So I was like, OK, he's serious. But, you know, the American people here were like, OK, who stab people nowadays? Like, <laughs> but he was doing it. OK. Um, number 10, he he had access to a gun. OK. And and I didn't know he had access to a gun, but he would always dish out threats. And we, when it came to a gun, we were like, OK. How, like we think, like, how did you even get a gun? You know, but. I guess he came from overseas and was able to get his hands on the guns. Maybe he got one from the prostitutes. I don't know, but I'll show you guys those text messages because he does um, tell a few girls that he has a gun and it's a nine millimeter. So um, number 11. Yeah. He was very adamant about getting married. Okay. Um, he, he has stated a few times and even in court, he tried to say that, you know, oh, I never wanted to come to America. She just filled out the paperwork and then came to me and said, OK, you're going overseas for anybody who actually knows the process. For um, the K-1 visa or you can look it up, there's a substantial amount of documents that he has to fill out himself. For example, um, he would have to go to like their office, like vital statistics for us. He would have to go there and like get like birth certificates and um, proof that he he's not married. He had to go and take a physical all the way in Kingston, which is about an hour and a half from from Ochi. So um, he had to take passport pictures. He had to um, sign paperwork and fill it in. So it wasn't like I went and filled out an application and then came to him and said, hey, guess what? I did it. And and you're we have to wait now for them to approve it or not. And then you get to come overseas. That's not what happened at all. So, again, there's a part that he has to play in it. And he claims that he didn't know anything about it. I guess he was like, oh, my God, I, what? <laughs> <laughs> but that's not what happened. So here in part 12, there was a lot of violence between. um. When I first met him and coming into the United States, I did think that he would change. I did think that things would get better. Um, I sought counseling out uh, in Jamaica and in the U.S. because he was he had a, a temper. And I really thought that, you know, maybe getting him some help and getting like couples counseling would help him and just develop into a person who's not so angry all the time. But it did not help. I didn't know that he was so far gone, like like a Ted Bundy style type of person that no help would would be good to him. OK, so moving on to 13 and October 2021, I found out that he was having multiple affairs with other women while he was here in Illinois. Mind you, we were only together in Illinois 
four months before he had left. And within that four month time span, he had found his way to multiple women. And this is aside from the 186 prostitutes. These are women that he would meet at the gas station that he worked in and anywhere else, probably. And, you know, give them this story about how he's from Jamaica and he had a business over in Jamaica and he came here to get a better life and take care of his family. And he's single. He lives with family right now. And um, he's not with anybody. Uh, He even told one girl like, yeah, you know, I live with my child's mother, but we're not together. And I hope you don't think I'm lying and all of this. I'll show you guys this. Okay. Again, I don't lie. I bring the facts. So, um, yeah, he, he was telling all these women, all of this crap. And he even conceived the child with another woman and had a baby on the way. And, um, it is mind blowing to think that this person would go into a church and, you know, look at you, hold your hand, let this pastor say his thing. And you sitting there knowing what type of devilish intent you have going on. You know, you have a baby on the way and you never said anything about that at all, anything. And I'm like, that's, that's crazy to sit there in, in front of God. Basically. I mean, God knows what you're doing. He knows your heart anyway. But for you to walk into a church, I'm surprised the church didn't just burn down. Like when he walked in, that, that would have been a sign. But um, anyhow, 14, um, this talks about the night he left where he assaulted me and ran out. And that's the day he made up his story about him being hunted down. Um, if you guys haven't seen that video, check out the last video entitled uh, Why Is He a con artist instead of just a cheating boyfriend. Um, Moving on, um, 15 states that he went and filed a fabricated emergency order of protection, which was denied because it was like, how are you running around through this community and you saying somebody's shooting at you or whatever the case may be? It it was just a bunch of craziness. So I'm pretty sure the judge and and the police was like, do me a favor, please get out of here. Get out of here, man. Shit, I'm saying. You see, as it, you see, it says right here, formerly known as an annulment. Like I said, they changed the name. All right. And then we go on to state the reasons why. And a party lacked capacity to consent to marriage. OK. Or 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 the party was induced to marriage by force or duress or by fraud. OK, that's very important um, if you guys are going through something similar and, and they say, OK, on what grounds are you seeking an annulment? And there are certain aspects that you would have to prove. And like they said here, um, you know, somebody was uh, lacked capacity to consent, uh, maybe drugs or alcohol was involved when they got married and they didn't know what they was doing. Or in my case. A party was induced to enter into a marriage by force or duress or by fraud involving the essentials of marriage. OK. Um, 17. And we we go on here to basically, you know, say that this boy was a con artist. Um, I was definitely induced into the marriage by force and duress and by fraud involving the essentials of marriage. Okay. Um, then we go on to state what marriage fraud is and what type of offense it is. And, um, you know, the immigration law state that those who get basically those who get convicted of it, you know, can get up to five years in jail or in prison, um, or fined up to $250,000. All right. Um, OK, then we go on to state some other facts right here. You know, marriage is a contract and um, he clearly had no intent to fulfill his marital obligations at all. From the, the day he got here, I think less than a month after being here, he started buying the prostitutes. So it's kind of like how you get here and less than a month later, you already soliciting sex from prostitutes. I mean, a bunch of them. 
not just one or two, but a bunch of them. Even just one is wrong. You know, it's, it's showing you to be who you really are, which is a creep. Tales from the creep. Then we go on to talk about, um, you know, the duress that I was under and him basically marrying me to avoid immigration laws, meaning he conned his way into the United States. Um, and then we say, you know, for that reason, we ask that um, the the judge deem this marriage invalid. And, you know, this is the definition of a sham marriage, which it was. So um, that's that's our petition. And let me go to his responses when he did have attorneys. I think you guys should see this because it's funny. OK, so. Here I have pretty much the first page of his response pulled up. Uh, this is his response to our petition. And remember, we petitioned for an annulment and he came he came back with his attorneys and had to respond to that petition. So that's the process, guys. Once you guys send in a petition for something, they have a certain amount of days to respond. So um, I'm going to show you guys the first page and then I'll go over to another document which has the same answers on there. Um, but as you can see, Ashley, the petitioner, can Troy Richards, the respondent. And this is from his attorneys. OK. And it says now comes the respondent, Ken Troy Richards, um, by and through his attorneys that go his attorney's names. So, again, you guys see this is from his people. And OK, so now I have up the document that I prepared. For my attorneys, once we got back his response to our petition, I knew it was going to be some foolishness, but I didn't know it was going to be some foolishness times, too. OK, um, he denied a lot of things that we said, of course, um, and just blatantly lied on this entire response. And it was like, I don't recall right now if he knew all of the evidence we had. Um, I don't think he knew about the text message records at the time. I'm not sure. Um, I know it was his attorney's job to present to him certain things, but even it was his job to tell the truth. OK, when you hire an attorney, you want to come to them with everything, even if it makes you look bad, because then they will be able to decide, do I want to work with this person or do I want to send them packing? Like, and uh, uh, I've, I've heard that he reached out to a few attorneys and some of the people he reached out to was like, uh, uh, buddy. It's a no. 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 It's a big, it's a big no for me. <laughs> like it's a hard pass. So um, here, what I have up is his responses. And I just want to do a quick side by side. And then I'm going to open up my document in full. Basically what I did was I copied each point from each document and put it into one. And then I allowed myself to respond after that. So for example, um, we put in that, let me see, in my petition, we went ahead and said, you know, Ashley is 30. I was 30 at the time, currently living in Illinois, blah, blah, blah. And then he comes and responds and says, yes. And Troy admits that Ashley is 30. Um, he said he's without sufficient information to admit or deny the remaining allegations. OK, so I guess he was claiming he didn't know where I was from and what job I held and stuff like that. So you'll see on this side, on the right side, where this is our petition information. And then I put that I'm employed as a private investigator. And then his response, which you'll see, it matches right here on this side. OK, can Troy admits, blah, blah, blah. Uh, he he can't admit or deny the remaining allegations. So pretty much he did. He wanted to act like he didn't know if I was a PI or not when he knew that's what I've done since since we met. Um, and then at the bottom, I'll put my response. So this is going to be a good document for you guys to to see, but also to use it for reference if you are in a similar situation, because it just makes it so much easier to see what the points are that are being made and what the responses are in one document. So you don't have to flip through pages. So you'll see here for question or for point one, I put, um, yes, I'm an Illinois resident and can provide uh, proof if needed. And below 
is a copy of my private investigator license. So I did show that. So moving on, let's go to point three. Okay. Um, Point three, we mentioned that both parties were married on September 11th, 2021. And then you'll see his response. Um, He admits that we were married in 2021. And then he goes on to state that he and I have been in a significant dating and conjugal relationship since 2017. Kentroy uh, firmly states that the parties have one child together who was born prior to the marriage. Okay. So that's true. Not okay. The part that's not true <laughs> is that we did not meet in 2017. So he says this multiple times and I'm like, how are you in such a significant, you know, legitimate relationship and you don't even know when you met somebody. So he keeps saying that he met me in 2017. And so on my document, I go on to show that the first time I even went to Jamaica was freaking 2018. I show proof there. I show my flight. Okay. And if they needed anything else, they could have gotten it or subpoenaed it because I haven't been there. I went to Jamaica. I don't know at some point on a cruise and, you know, you get off on a cruise ship. Um, we went to, I think one of the the place with the waterfalls and you walking up the rocks and everything, but we went there, uh, me, my, my family, and then we left. So, you know, the, the boat doesn't stay there too long. I never heard of a creature called Ken Troy Richards at that time. So, um, yeah, we didn't meet in 2017. So that was, that was the, the first stupid thing that he, he mentioned in this, in this, um, document. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the document in full so that you guys can see it should help some people. Um, just know what to look for or what to try and request if you are going through a similar situation. Okay. So for, um, like I said, we stayed together until October 13th and he went and said, yes, uh, we resided with one another after the marriage. Uh, he states that Ashley and her extended family confronted and accosted him. You want to meet grandma? Well, here she is. wife you dumb bitch who you calling a dumb bitch you you dumb bitch young bitch silly bitch dead bitch she got the gun bitch Lonnie, if you're gonna bring bitches in here bring a smart bitch <laughs> at the marital residence thereby placing his health and safety at issue such that he saw an order of protection and forced him to remove himself from an unsafe situation all right so then they go on to file whatever he filed which again was denied because he's a liar um again check out that video it's going to show you just how much of a liar he he really is um so yeah i i go in to give my response to that which is the fact that he wasn't hunted down or nothing happened to him and that you know he and i had a disagreement about him not helping me with the baby which he never did help help with um so let's go on to number five no children were born Um, during the marriage his response he says yeah okay that's true we didn't have any children uh during the marriage we had a daughter prior to september 11 2021 okay so i go on to say yeah that's true we didn't have any children born during the marriage ashley was not pregnant um and i give the date that my baby was born and then i dropped her birth certificate then i go on to say furthermore Ken Troy does not acknowledge Ariel on one occasion while using the text now app to text a woman he was dating while engaged to Ashley Wardlow below. He states that he has a daughter in J a B in Jamaica, which he does. He does have a daughter in Jamaica, uh, but he doesn't even acknowledge Ariel. So here you guys, you'll see, let me zoom in for you here. You'll see a text message that uh, he received from a young woman and she says pretty much like you got any kids or baby mamas and he like yeah I got a daughter in Jamaica 
So you just don't forget about my baby. <laughs> I mean, what's going on with men lying about the number of kids you have? Like, I just don't get it. Um, he knows Embriel is his. And then he also had another baby on the way. So he should have told her, yeah, I got some babies. I got two and then one on the way. But he's a liar and he'll say whatever he needs to say to make himself look um, more appealing to a- another woman. So uh, let's go on to number six. So, yeah, we met in Jamaica. That's pretty much what they're saying. We met in Jamaica. He agreed that we met in Jamaica. He studied claiming that, you know, um, we were in a legitimate relationship and that he did not. um, He was never adamant about getting married and moving to the U.S. And so I go on to say, can Troy consistently insisted that I marry him? Um, He claimed to come to America with the intentions of building the family with me, getting a job, helping me take care of the baby. You know, he painted this picture like he wasn't a creep, like he wasn't Ted Bundy in the making, you know? Um, so you, you'll you see some WhatsApp messages that I show, which pretty much shows him saying, you know, um, I just want you to be happy. I'm going to do everything in my power to get you to forgive me. Um, if we go to the States and you do marry me, I want you to get, me to sign a prenup and something like that. You know, he's pretty much saying like, if you want to divorce me and anything happens, I'll make sure I take care of you and pay alimony. So he's saying all of this and it didn't come to me as an alert or red flag. It just came to me like, okay, he's saying he wants to come and be this family man. And if something happens, you know, he's still going to fulfill his duty, which he hasn't. So, um, yeah. And, and there are some more messages right there. Um, he, here he is saying, you know, here's my chance to take care of my family. Um, I've pa- I've changed. So I'll I'll make an entirely separate video about what he's referring to when he's saying, oh, I changed and, you know, forgive me because it wasn't all uh, sunshine and palm trees and beaches and sand when I lived in Jamaica. It was crazy. OK, it was crazy. It's H-E-L-L. But I'll make a separate video for that to fill you guys in on what happened here. Number seven, we say, you know, he came to the United States on K-1 visa. um, And on October 13th, he was caught on a baby cam doing what he did quite often, which was assaulting me. And uh, he says, he goes on to say, yeah, I came on the K-1 visa, but I didn't assault her. So I go on to show the pictures. Uh, It's kind of hard to say that you didn't hit somebody when you have pictures hitting them. So, um, but that's, that's what he did. Um, Again, things were not nice when I was in Jamaica all the time and it was always a bunch of forgiving and I won't do it again, but we'll get into that. Okay. Um, Number eight. I did mention that he sexually assaulted me and he says, no, um, I did not sexually assault her. He demanded proof. And, um, he says that my claim is basically a way to try to make him look bad. Okay. And then they say, uh, oh, uh, well, if he raped you, why did you go and marry him? And my response to that was, look, I wanted to make my family work. I was, we were in counseling at the time and I really thought that he could be helped, but I did not know Voldemort. That's what we call him sometimes Voldemort. I didn't know Voldemort was so far gone. Okay. He was gone from Hogwarts. He was gone from Ocho Rios. He was gone. Okay. I didn't know Voldemort was so far gone that he could not be helped. So Um, I go on to show, to say that, yeah, he did rape me and he has a sex problem because only a person with a sex problem can purchase a 186 prostitutes within four months. Okay. Do the math of how many prostitutes that is. I mean, sometimes he was getting them two or three times a day back to back. And it was like, that's somebody with a problem. Okay. Um, and I did have text messages, um, to show he and I discussing what happened after the day where he raped me. And I texted him and told him, you know, that, that makes me feel 
so violated and, and you're a disgusting person. And we tried to move on from that afterwards, but it was very difficult because whether it's somebody, you know, who rapes you or somebody who's a complete stranger, it does not feel good to be taken advantage of at all. So let's go on to number nine. Uh, this is where we pretty much say, Hey, look here, this idiot went and purchased a knife on Amazon and he was walking around telling everybody it's a knife. Like I'm going to stab you. It's a knife. And he goes and says, no, that did not happen. He says that he ordered the, the knife on Amazon and that he actually used my account to do it and that I knew about it. So me being me. Now, this is one of the reasons why I say people should work with me, because I was like, you trying to lie and say that you went on my account to purchase a knife and that I knew about it. So I pleasantly went to Amazon and said, hey, here's the order number. OK, I need you guys to confirm that this order number was not purchased on Ashley Wortlow's account. And there you see it. There's the email from customer service from Amazon saying, yeah, uh, this is confirming that this is the order number and that's the knife. It was not purchased under my account, period, point blank. So there there you see him lying to his his um, attorneys. OK, he said, hey, I bought it on her account. And Amazon's like, no, 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 not today. <laughs> no, no, boo boo. You didn't. Sorry. <laughs> so, Tin, um, he made it known that he had access to a gun and he did threaten me and he threatened to shoot my family and he goes and denies it. So. In those text messages, those famous text messages that you guys will be seeing everything at one point. OK, but in those famous text messages, um, he goes out to tell people, hey, look at this. This says sent right here. OK, sent messages. I might shoot someone. I'm going to New York soon. OK, scroll down. Sent again. That's me. He's sending it to somebody. Um. Oh, wait, let's go up a little bit. He's telling her if she has her gun and, and to be safe. And um, she says, no, I don't have a gun. Then he goes to say, I have a nine millimeter because I don't know when the time is going to come for me to defend myself or someone in need. OK, Batman. It's not who I am underneath. But what I do. It defines me. OK. <laughs> I didn't know he was Batman and he out here saving the world. But uh, moving on, <laughs> moving on. Um, so another person, this is a whole nother person asking like, hey, what was that I saw in your status? Because he had posted a video of himself dancing with the gun. OK, I'm going to see if I can find that video for y'all and 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 show y'all he was getting down with that gun. OK. And um, he tells her. Um, oh, okay. She said she liked him, like him a lot. See, I didn't, I didn't even see that. Um, he, he basically tells her that his brother has a pistol in the house and he was messing around being goofy with it. And she was, he basically said like, it's legal. And she like, um, okay, you got some brothers in Chicago. And he like, yeah, uh, six of them. So he does not have brothers in Chicago. He had one brother that visited. Now, if that brother brought a gun for him, um, I'm not sure. He goes by the name of JJ. Um, Ian. Okay. Ian. I'm not sure if Ian brought a gun for Ken Troy when he came to visit, but if he did, that's illegal. Um, but yeah, he says he got six brothers here in Chicago. I want to know where they at. Because the last time I checked, all of them was in Jamaica. So here he is. Just a quick picture of how much of a liar this idiot is. OK. Um, yeah. Here he is another time telling somebody I might kill somebody. So a bunch of times he's he's, you know, telling people, yeah, I got a gun. And then he goes in the court and says, no, I don't have a gun. I bought a fake gun off of Amazon, but I don't have a gun. So me, I go. And I was able to recover his search history 
that he was using on his cell phone because he would go and search um, with incognito tabs all the time. That's why his phone was always so empty. And he would use these third party apps to message and call other women. So you guys be cautious of that. If if someone has a phone and you think, oh, my man is so good or my woman is so good. You know, she's not calling a bunch of people and texting a bunch of people. Be on the lookout for those third party apps, because what he was doing is what they're probably doing, which is he would delete the app from his phone when he comes home. But when he hits the door, he's reinstalling it back onto his phone. So as far as browsing history, here he is searching up all this information about guns. So it's kind of hard for any judge to believe him when he says he wasn't threatening anyone with the gun because here he is searching for him. And then he's telling multiple people, yes, I have a gun. So um, let's go on to number 11. Um, we, we're just stating that, you know, we were married on September 11th. Can Troy states that he and Ashley were in love and jointly decided to get married. Ken Troy further states that Ashley, he and Ashley have been in a significant dating and conjugal relationship since 2017. Again, I didn't know of a creature named Ken Troy Richards. Voldemort, I didn't know him in 2017. So, um, and here's my response. Just pretty much saying that he wanted to marry me to get into the United States, period. Um, 12. So there was a lot of violence. Um, and he was physically abusive to me. And, um, he goes and denies it. Of course, says that I put a bounty on his head. Check out that last video. I know this is me saying it again, but check out the last video where I mentioned the bounty and I show you guys a picture of it. And yeah, I go down that whole line. So he also went and told his attorneys that I had put a life insurance policy on him. So I guess what he was trying to paint out is that I went all the way to Jamaica, stayed out there, got him to come here to marry me, got some insurance on him, just so that I can have him killed and get some insurance money. Gentlemen, in exactly five days, we will be $100 billion richer. <laughs> okay. Um <laughs> yeah. Um none of that crap never happened and the whole spiel with the insurance came from me buying land in Jamaica and part of the process is to get life insurance in case something happens to you. You have to have an insurance policy that is equal or higher to the amount of the land. So while we were there, I told him, you know, you should get yourself insured and your family insured as well, because that's just normal. Like we, we have a child together. Uh, if something happens to either of us, this child needs to be taken care of. So that's normal for, for me and my family. I mean, for, uh, I guess a lot of American people, I would hope that it's normal to discuss the things that we might not want to discuss, which is life insurance because we, we all perish at some point. So, uh, he got the life insurance policy. Um, it was in his name, but I was paying on it. And I guess he wanted to use that in court and say, you know, she trying to have me killed. <laughs> the judge wasn't falling for that crap neither. Okay. So 13, I state that he had multiple affairs throughout our relationship with women in the U S um, who he was also attempting to marry and even conceive a child with another woman who had a baby on the way. So, um, he goes and says he can't respond. Hmm. He cannot respond to what Ashley claims to have learned and therefore denies the same and demands strict proof thereof. And I'm like, Oh, you want proof? You want proof? 
Do you want me to tell you something? Too. I love going to Great I'm an outlet playing around. Okay, sweetie. And ain't nothing fake about that. I got it for you. Okay. I go ahead and say he had a baby with Makiba Williams, who resides in New York. And below are screenshots regarding the baby that they have together. So here are some screenshots, and you guys may have seen these before, but they're talking about the baby and uh, if if she's going to give the baby his last name and a bunch of other stuff. But it shows that they're talking about a child that they're both expecting together. Um, I showed this in a previous video already, but it was Makiba's um, baby registry. Then he attempted to buy the baby clothes on Amazon and send them over to her. Uh, that payment was denied. Close figure. Um, oh, and look at this. On December 6th, he contacted me for one of his fake numbers. Mind you, he's the king of fake numbers, y'all. <laughs> for real. Um, he contacts me and blatantly states, like, yeah, I got the girl pregnant. As you can see, okay, I cheated. I got the girl pregnant, okay? Um, and I'm pretty much telling him, you know, everybody know what you did. Everybody is disgusted with you. And all the plotting and planning that you did, you know, to get into the U.S., it was disgusting. It's, it's very disgusting to do that. So um, he goes and sends us proof of him sending Makiba money. I don't know why he did that. Um, Cause at first he was trying to act like he didn't even know who she was. And then he goes and sends us proof that he was sending her money. So I'm like, okay, you sent her a whole $95 for your baby. Good job. Like good job. Cause I didn't get not a dollar. So at least you got 95. Okay. So 14, this is us talking about uh, what happened on the night of October 13th. And he goes and tells his story. Now I'm not going to read this long story because I've read it in the previous video already. Um, it's, it's pretty much him outlining again that he was hunted down and, and <laughs> chased down like a, a monster movie or something. Um, 15, two days later, uh, he filed that blatantly fake police report or order of protection. It was denied. Um, and then I go and show that you know, he says his passport was taken, but it, it wasn't taken. And all of that stuff he wrote in here was just a big, stupid lie. <laughs> um, let's see, 16. All right. So, yeah, we're pretty much saying why we want the marriage to be annulled. And I pretty much says that, you know, can Troy 100 percent committed marriage fraud. This petition for invalidity of marriage is 100% correct. And the evidence will prove that Ken Troy's true intentions, you know, up here, I believe he stated that he doesn't want to get a annulment. He wanted a divorce. Okay. And his whole reason for wanting a divorce was because he was telling other people that he married me for papers and he was actually instructing his new baby mama, Makiba, to uh, file a different type of paperwork for him to stay here in the U.S. OK, um, let me see. I'll show you guys that those text messages with him instructing her what to, to fill out. But yeah, down below, you'll see a bunch of times where he's talking about marrying me for papers. Pretty much. I even have a recording which was obtained legally from uh, a conversation with Makiba where she says, y'all got married for papers. You didn't want the world to know that you messing with a married man? Bitch, you just got married to the man for some fucking papers. So, but how would she know that unless he told her? So um, let's see. As soon as I get my paperwork, I'm leaving, starting a fresh life for myself. I mean... You get I mean, you can't really deny that. And so <laughs> these are his text messages once again. Um, let's see. Hard though because I have to wait for immigration to finish my paperwork. So he's talking about the paperwork a lot to different women and telling them, "Hey, once I get my stuff, I'm out. I'm gone." So um, see, there it is again. I'm grateful to have 
life just waiting right now to get my paper straight. <laughs> so 17, here we are. Um, again, we state that I was induced into the marriage by duress and by fraud. Um, I was definitely trapped in there and I was afraid for my life because he was violent and I wasn't sure what he was capable of. And this is aside from all like the creepnism, like, you know, all of that creepy stuff he was doing. This is just straight up like violent, you know, temperamental person. And he definitely duped me into to bringing him here. And he wanted to avoid immigration laws. So uh, he goes and states that he denies it and he demands strict proof. So I go on and say, and Troy never intended to fulfill his marital obligations to me. In fact, Starting in mid-July, not even one month of being in the U.S., Ken Troy began contacting and meeting with prostitutes for sex. Per the text now message records, Ken Troy contacted approximately 186 prostitutes for sex. The prostitutes met with Ken Troy for car dates, QVs, which were quick visits, and would meet the pro- he would meet the prostitutes at their homes and hotels. Ken Troy paid thousands of dollars for sex from prostitutes. So furthermore, Kentroy led on a romantic relationship with multiple women whom he told he was either single, not married, or not in a relationship with me and intended to leave me after receiving his immigration papers. Kentroy even instructs the mother of his new child to file a petition for him to remain in the U.S. So if you look below, this is a screenshot of text messages between him and Makiba. That's the new baby mama. And he's pretty much telling her that um, you can file a I-130 petition as long as this filing is closed. So listen up. He's telling her, once I get this divorce from Ashley, I need you to file another paperwork for me. So what is the I-130? Let me tell you. So the I-130 petition is pretty much like a petition for relatives. So he was trying to basically have her fill out this form because he has that baby with her. It's my baby mama. Yeah, no. I want y'all support. She get work for checks, but I stay in court. And that's what he was going to use to try and stay here in the United States once he got a divorce from me. What he didn't realize is that that was just not going to work because you came here on the K-1 visa to get married. And then I was supposed to fill out more paperwork for him to adjust his status. That never happened because he got caught. So he was trying his best to play out his role and, you know, but it was just that level of creep that was in him that really, really, you know, pushed him to get caught because he he was a creep. He just was. If, if someone's trying to, you know, talk about a petition, a I-130 petition, just know what it's for. And, um, you know, they're trying to look for ways to get out of one thing with you so that they can get into something else with someone else. So, OK, so I'll jump back over to this again. I wanted to show you guys he's telling her to file an I-130 petition. So he's done his research. OK, He's he's done his research probably before he even came to the U.S. and, and figured I'll marry Ashley. I'll um, get a divorce from her. And at some point he was even having Makiba help him to get lawyer numbers. So he's instructing her like, hey, help me get a divorce. I'm going to come and be with you and, and, and my son. And she's like, OK, well, here, I'll help you. Here's the money for the lawyer. You know, here's 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 what else do you need here? Come and be with me. And it's like. At some point, you have to think if he's doing this to one person, why don't you think he's going to be doing it to you? So I don't know. Um, to each his own. Um, let's see. And then I think I just put a few of um, his text messages. So I think he's he's um, probably trying to deny the whole prostitute thing. I know he texted me and said he never paid for stuff like that. Um, here is one text message with the prostitute telling him. Um, thanks today, Jordan, <laughs> that D was great. So um, I don't know what other Jordan she could be referring to, especially when we subpoena text records for Ken Troy Richards. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Um, let's see. 
Yeah, look at that. Oh, Jesus. This is this is sad. He even gave one of the prostitutes my address. And I was like, you, you, you really pushing it. You, you took it, you overstepped. Okay. Um, 18, we're pretty much putting in what happens to people who commit marriage fraud. And it was simple. He did. That's what he, he did. That's exactly what he did. Um, we put that marriage as a contract and he states that he states some, some whack stuff. They stated some whack stuff and said, um, you know, they deny any mischaracterization. So I said, Kentroy did not fulfill his marital obligations and he never intended to. And look at some of these text messages. So one girl, he tells her, um, it's not that we're together. I, and it's not that I'm cheating. We're not together. I just want to keep cool until we close this thing out because truth is she can cause trouble for me. Okay. That was one of the young women that he was actually dating um, here in Illinois. And he was telling her a bunch of stuff, a bunch of craziness. And she was a church girl. Uh, I could tell by, you know, she was always in, in Bible study and stuff. And she was always quoting from the Bible to him. And I'm like, girl, you just don't know. This is the devil that you you quoting this stuff to like this is the real devil himself so here's one that i think is interesting in 21 i put that you know his sole purpose was to evade immigration laws and that he wanted to come here and had been trying to marry multiple women which he was he was trying to marry like that phone showed a lot of craziness and he was trying to marry pretty much anybody who can get him out of jamaica and um he fathered a child with another woman um, and was trying to get the woman pregnant. So he goes and denies that and says, no, she's lying. And I go right behind him and say, well, what's this text message with you telling a girl you can finally get her pregnant? Like, what's that? If I'm lying, then why are you doing that? Okay. Um, let's see. <sighs> That's him pretty much saying he wants to get a divorce instead of an annulment. And I'm like, no. We're going to get this annulment because you are fraud. So some notes that I wrote down and you guys should be note taking too. Uh, if, if you have a case like this um, and stuff, stuff is coming to your mind, you know, make sure you're writing it down because your mind is going to be all over the place for a few weeks, a few months. Um, you're going to have good stuff that pops up in your head and it can actually be useful in court. So you don't want to forget that I had a notepad where I would, you know, write stuff down, but I would also then send it over to my lawyers because I didn't want to forget. So they had everything. Um, some notes that I wrote here. So at one point um, for Jordan's response in his petition, he put a bunch of pictures with me and him together. And he put like some of our family photos that we had took before we left Jamaica. Um, he had put a bunch of stuff and it was like you sitting there trying to show these these people that we were in a relationship because of some pictures. What you need to really do is look into the eyes of the person that's in that picture, which is him, and see that he's smiling with a straight face, knowing that he's fraudulently marrying me to come to the United States knowing that he has a child on the way with another woman, knowing that, you know, his, his heart and his intent is really malicious knowing that. So it's like you showing pictures for what, just to show us a picture of the devil. Like, um, you know what he reminds me of aside from Voldemort, he reminds me of that, that evil person that they show on insidious. I think that's the name of the movie. Yeah. That monster scared the mess out of me, but he, that's what he reminds me of. Okay. Um, yeah. And he even goes on to say that his mom or his family knew about this girl with this baby. So in my head, I'm thinking, you know, and this is another reason why I did not deal with the family. And I would recommend that if you are in a similar situation to cut all ties, because what could happen is they could try to use something against you or they could be in on the fraud scheme. So in this case, he mentions here, you can see this text message. He's telling his new baby mama, Makiba, that 
you know, uh, you're no secret to the family. They know about you. And, and she's like, OK, you keep saying that I'm not a secret. That don't mean nothing to me. And this and that. And I'm like, so if they knew, um, you know, good riddance to them. I mean, I, I can't see how a whole family would feel OK, especially a family of God, because they they're some church people. I don't know how they would feel good, you know, being in on the plots and schemes and stuff. But uh, that's going to be a whole nother video. I want to talk to you guys about, you know, just what to look out for in with the family in particular, because you think, you know, someone loves you and you're in good with the family. And sometimes it's all about what you can do for them. So, um, yeah, that's what I have for you. Um, I do expect hopefully soon to have a guest speaker. And I think that guest speaker will be very helpful to watch and um, going to give you guys some good information. So overall, guys, I think what helped me win my case, just to, to do a quick conclusion, um, the amount of time we were married, it was 32 days. OK, that was before he left. Um, the fact that he purchased prostitutes and the number of prostitutes, I mean, the number just added on to the disgusting level. but. Um, the fact that he did it in general, overall, it, it was, it was saddening. Um, he told multiple people in those text messages that he was going to move to New York and it's like, okay, you told everybody you about to move to New York, but me, like, <laughs> I, I didn't know that we was going to move to New York. Like, let me know. But that was never the plan. Okay. Um, he was planning on marrying me and then leaving to go to New York. Um, another thing, he held multiple relationships with other women and claimed that he wasn't with me. So a judge is going to look at those text messages and, and probably figure, okay, you're claiming you're in love with this person and this is your woman. This is, this is your woman. I'm your woman. All right. All of that. But, uh, you telling these other women that she ain't another thing, um, Marriage is a contract and he had no intent to fulfill his marital obligation to me whatsoever. Um, I think another thing that really helped was the fact that he had that child with another woman and was telling her that he was going to divorce me and instructing her on what paperwork to fill out for him next. I think that was like a big one right there because it's like, before you even married this girl, you had plans to unmarry her and to divorce her. Like, that's crazy. Um, and another thing, he was abusive. Um, the picture speak, speak for itself. The search history with the guns, the text messages with him telling people he had guns, uh, that it's a knife, you know, all of that um, just showed that he was a very uh, abusive person and he was violent. You know, I, to this day, I still am like, I have to watch my back. I have to watch my family's back because he is a violent person. And you never know when that monster is going to seep up from the from the ground or from the, the sewer like a Ninja Turtle. So, yeah, that's what I have for you guys today. That's what, what I use to, you know, I think inevitably win my case again. I did use a lawyer and I did use a consultant. Um, their information is down below. I do think that they helped as well. Um, very much so. So if you are going through this and you're in Illinois, um, my lawyers should be able to help. And I believe the consultant that I use, John, he'll be able to help, you know, pretty much wherever you are. Um, I, I think he helped me a lot too. So shout out to them. Thank you guys so much. Um, I still can't believe that I'm free. Like <laughs> I'm literally free um, mentally and emotionally from a con artist. You know, it's different aspects to it. But if you guys are going through something similar, I wish you guys the best. Um, hit me up if you need assistance or if you have any other questions, I'll be more than happy to help. Bye bye.